Mr. President, Georgi Ivanov, my professor, beloved Professor Ivanov, uh, and First Lady, uh, Mrs. Maya Ivanova, dear donors, um, dear uh, professors, and dear participants, and representatives of the media who are um, here in a large number today, which gives us a special uh, kind of honor uh, that the public is uh, so interested in what we are doing here for the eighth year in a row. Um, for the eighth year in a row, I was um, thinking not to mention anything from my previous speeches because I'm doing this eight years now. I just uh, wanted to, to welcome you all in our holy city of Ohrid, in our ancient land of Macedonia, which now, uh, thanks to, to the program of the president and what he was doing with his team all these years, has, um, is right now um, a center of leadership. Uh, we, we have managed to to give this to Ohrid and to receive your positive energy uh, year after year. Now let me invite the founding father of our school, my professor, President Georgi Ivanov, please. ki vi zborovam na makedonski jazik, bideki čustvata na majčinjot jazik, najlesno se iskažuva. Ogromna i česta i blagodarnosta za ovakvi od početok na osmata generacija na školata za mlade lideri. Golema blagodarnost do sive ovi oluge, profesori, podržuvači, sponzori, koji kontinuirano je shvatio ulogata što znači da se investira vo mladite дека секоја инвестиција во младите е инвестирање во еднината. Ова е обука како да ве обучиме да знаете да раководите, како да знаете да создавате тимови, како идеите да ги представите и претворите во реалност. За овие години учевте вие од нас, но и ние од вас. И така што и нашата програма ја прилагодувавме за генерациите што доаѓаат, И осум е веќе една магична бројка во која има две значења од осмицата која ќе ја легнете станува бесконечна. Посакувам овие знаења да бидат бесконечни, да се пренесуваат на следните генерации, затоа што, што ова генерација, според сите истражувања, е генерација која најмногу придонесува да се менува светот. Секој пат верувајте во тоа што е сонот и мечтата на вашата генерација. Затоа што вашата генерација ги користи сите придобивки на човековата цивилизација и има пристап до сето знаење, сето умење, до се што е дигитално. Или една шала, вели, младите имат свој господ, кој е секаде, се знае и постојано е сонив и се вика Google. Ви посакувам овие денови поминати на оваа обука да ги осознаете сите вештини од овие луѓе кои за себе имаат успешни кариери, кои направиле нешто и постигнале во животот и затоа се со нас. Ова е школа и обука на успешните, затоа што со самото тоа што сте тука меѓу нас, сте тие што се најуспешни. Ние се обидуваме најуспешните да бидат уште поуспешни, затоа што во секое обштество е необходно луѓе кои водат. Но гумина, не знаејќи што се случува, ја поистоветува тоа со старите школи за политика. Нема тука политика. Тука има вештини за водење и раководење, вештини за создавање на проекти, за аплицирање на грандови и на огјање решенија. Тука е момент за иновација и за креација. И посакувам овие денови да ви бидат исполнети со многу нови идеи, да ви бидат исполнети со многу нови проекти, со многу нови познанства и многу вмрежување. Аз патувам многу по света. И ми е многу тежно кога се врна в Европа и видам младите хора в Европа спрямо 
младите хора в Източна и Централна Азия. Хора, които, както каза и господин президента, наистина живеят по-добре в момента от това, което са живели предните поколения. Но това са хора, които са с нахъсани да бъдат успешни, да бъдат лидери, които са загърбили личното си време и непрекъснато от тях лъка амбицията да бъдат напред. Докато младите хора, не искам да говоря за тукъщните присъстващи, тук се радват на добрия стандарт, на добрия живот. И някакси не са безпокоят какво ще се случи в бъдещето и как ще се случи. Затова, млади хора, които сте тук, правете така, че да събирате други млади хора, мъдри, които искат техните поколения да живеят още по-добре и желая успех. Като лидер, What can I delegate? I can delegate all the work that they can do, but I cannot delegate my responsibility. In a leadership, you have to keep your responsibility to you. You cannot delegate your responsibility, but you can delegate your authority. You can delegate your authority, don't, don't worry. Delegate your authority, but you cannot delegate your responsibility. This is very important. That's why I say, Sometimes authority over autonomy, sometimes autonomy over authority. Yeah, we give an autonomy structure to Tau, uh, Istanbul, Tau, uh, Skopje, Tau, Ohrid. They are autonomous. For example, Tau uh, Macedonia is a Macedonian company. Don't make decisions emotionally. Not just because you don't have a good sense but because the others will not understand, because they don't see your emotions. You have to make decisions on a rational basis that others can follow the decision. And we talked about it, how important it is that others follow your decision. You don't want to pursue them, you want to convince them. Now, if you take an emo uh, emotional decision, it might be the right decision, but the others don't know why you have taken this decision. So you have to make it transparent. The leaders the fixed problems. The leaders, the fixed problems, never complain. It's complain, it doesn't help, right? Okay, so several words, hopefully you can remember, and uh, hopefully whatever I talked give you a little bit of help in your whole life. Vision, passion, and action. My father, when he was making speeches, at the end of the speech, he was always saying, we have to remain optimistic and we have to always not to think about nothing is working and it's all complicated we have to start and work on all the positive things that are happening we have to see the difficulties that we had in the just looking at the last uh, let's say at the last century what was all happening there and see how we can take today's politics into an optimistic future. And this is the most important thing. And this is also, I think, a task of leaders to get the, this optimistic approach because then they become much more crea creative and much more open to positive developments for the future. Това, че се подготвят млади лидери е много важно, особено за такива млади държави, каквито са и България, и Македония, манички държави да бъдат подготвени хора, които ще поемат управлението на държавата и на економическия живот. В една такава непринудена обстановка първо се създават и приятелства, които са много важни, но се получават хубави уроци за това какво го чака за напред. Първо това е една голяма отговорност, ако си решил да ставаш лидер, защото първото нещо ти се самонатварваш с ангажимент към хората, които те подкрепят и които смятат, че ти можеш да ги водиш. Второто, което е това, означава, че ти се самоограничаваш в личното си време и в личния си живот. Значи ти още с тази стъпка трябва да знаеш, че от тук нататък имаш морален ангажимент към тези всичките хора. И им пожелавам да им се сбъднат техните мечти и желания, защото ако ти си един успешен лидер, един човек, който гледа не на близко разстояние, а гледа надалече и мисли за доброто и на обществото, и на хората, които са му повервали. След това удовлетворението сигурно ще бъде голямо. 
I always say the diplomas that you get from your universities has an expiration date because the world is so fast. It's only four years. During these four years, if you do not renew yourself, if you do not uh, train yourself, if you do not get education, then your diplomas will be expired. So you cannot base your 40 or 50 years of career on only a four years university study which you get. These kind of leadership uh, initiatives are very, very important for the future of the countries. How can I approach them in 40 minutes in such a short time and give them something which they can need? So if I would talk about my company or if I would do talk some theoretical stuff, yeah, they will forget even on the way home. Yeah, so I wanted really uh, to tell them something which maybe even 5% they can use as a takeaway. And we decided with Dr. Ivanov uh, that uh, the lecture should be about leadership, which is actually one of my favorite topics because it's so controversial and it's so um, misinterpreted, mis uh, misleading. And what we tried today is uh, to distinguish a little bit what does management mean and what does leadership mean. To bring together a group of people who are very talented, who want to do something, who want to change something, who want to be the leaders of the future, is a unique opportunity for them not only to meet each other, so be capable of when they in the future life they need something, they have friends they can connect to, they have advice they can ask, but also put them to in contact with an international group that helps them to see a lot of things out of a different perspective. Building the package is setting up the systems and structure that will allow someone to be successful. So let me give you a tool or a concept. It's called the Goldsmith Productivity Principle. I didn't name it, somebody else named it. I didn't know what they were naming it, and then I found out later it was called the GPP, Goldsmith Productivity Principle, and it says 80% of the results in an organization, 80% are based upon the systems and structure in place and not the people. That the people only make up 20% of the success of an organization. People are not the most important part of an organization. An individual today has to spend more time learning about other cultures, about other environments, other technologies. They have to spend a lot more time to understand what's coming down the pipeline in terms of the future. And I don't think enough people in general are really connected to all of these different types of changes. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, 3D printing, climate change, synthetic engineering, and many, many more things. So I think they have one of the pieces of advice I'd have is spend more time in the future so that you can be more prepared for today. The second piece of advice that I would have is that the world as a whole has a complex, it's always been complex, uh, a, an opportunity to turn to good or to turn a little bit um, backwards. The world has always gone forward. However, without the right leadership taking on that extra effort and, and being a part of organizations and helping move things forward, we won't get there. So I'm hoping that individuals participate in projects that are local, national, regional, um, and global. And it's amazing. Uh, the teachers are the best from the best. We have so many, so many teachers who are uh, share their own experience with us, who motivated us. For me, there was a lesson when I really feel alive for a moment. Uh, they gave me motivation to do things the best I know, and I'm thankful for this chance. Besides the conventional uh, education, uh, schools like this can uh, uh, offer a lot to young individuals as me, so they can uh, maybe uh, prepare uh, a lot uh, for their future careers and uh, help them uh, tackle the, the issues of the contem contemporary society. A hot team would be, uh, okay, uh, I believe yesterday was mentioned something about special forces, right? Okay, what does really happen there? They have a small group of people, generally a captain in charge, okay, with 
about 10 people. And within that group, you have a specialist in communication, you have a specialist in demolition, you have a specialist, you have a, a medical individual, you have all of these. Okay, now, is there a problem with demolitions or explosives? Who's going to be the leader? The medical guy? No. Right? Who's going to be the leader? It's going to be the individual who is a specialist in that area. So hot teams change. In the medical profession, <coughs> AER, things change, right? Yeah. The anesthesiologist, the this, the that. It depends upon the situation who the leader is. Okay? Key issue to understand. So it's not just the point that captain, if he's a good leader, steps aside and lets other people lead. And so those are called hot teams. I am extremely happy. Um, it's a great group that we have. I mean, we have we have lawyers, we have doctors, we have a whole variety of uh, young people, very smart people. Um, it's also international. I mean, we have people from different countries, which I think is, is very important because that was a thing that we were talking about, is to have a, a international school, to bring people together. Um, I think that the school has evolved to the degree that we have added new things. Of course, we've also learned new things, and we, we have learned on how to improve you know, some of the curriculum and so on. So I think we're doing very well. It, these people are going to contribute to society quite a bit, and not only that, but they're going to have, hopefully, contacts you know, from other countries and so on, and then integrate themselves with the past students. So that organization is growing and growing and contributing not only to Macedonia, but also to their own countries. So far, we have uh, had teachers with, with different backgrounds, with different topics, discussing leadership. And it has been a very uh, interesting program because uh, we had chance to interact and, and to, to share our experience with the people. I can see that participants, they are coming from different uh, backgrounds, with different experience. And it's, it's, it's wonderful to share everything with, with them and, and to, to exchange knowledge at the same time to, to gain more skills on, on leadership. Even though I don't know how the other generations behave before us, I was told, I mean, we were told that we are the, one of the best generations that have attended this school so far. I mean, it only took us a day and a half to put down our walls and start connecting with each other. I mean, everyone has a different background and and each and anyone and every one of us has something to offer to the others, and that's priceless. So we have a lot of unknowns here. Which alternatives are available? What is this C? Which outcomes are associated with these alternatives? What is this Y? And what are the probabilities that are associated with those outcomes? What is this X? All of these things are actually unknown. And this is a very common scenario that leaders face because you might be faced with a situation you've never seen before. There is no standard operating procedure for how to solve this problem. Um, in politics, this happens all the time. Some country invades another country. What are you going to do about it? Um, are you just going to sit around? Are you going to apply diplomatic pressure? Are you going to engage in war? There are lots of unknowns there, and you could probably expand the catalog of options uh, to other things, uh, different kinds of economic pressure that you can apply, etc. cetera. Um, and often the outcomes are not so quite clear. It's not entirely clear what these outcomes are going to be. You have to think those through, and then the probabilities are still altogether a different matter. You have to figure those out as well.
Uh, the biggest motivation for applying for this school was the president. On the day he gave us the rings, he explained the whole school. I mean, the exercise, the lectures, the teachers, the values of the school, and that was the thing that inspired me the most. I have lots of impressions about this school, about your country, Macedonia, Ohrid. I have lots of impressions about everything. But my the best, the very best impressions started till the moment we had the opening ceremony because. I even did not expect it such such an attention from the government. His Excellency Mr. President attended to the opening close, opening ceremony. He deliver, delivered his welcome speech and that motivated us a lot. That was so inspiring. He shared his experience. He told us kind welcome speech. He told us his advices and they that made me feel special. And by that moment, I realized how helpful this project is going to be for everyone here. And a social business is not charity. It's not a not-for-profit. It's a business which particularly does few things. Maybe solve one problem. At least in the long run, this should be sustainable. And this should give the entrepreneur or the person behind this a fair market price or a market salary. Like, as a social business entrepreneur, I always get market salary. But the investments that I do or some other people does, they get back their invested amount only. There is no dividend given. So there are seven different principles through which we define social businesses proposed by Professor Mohamed Yunus. Your venture, your idea, your project can solve any problem. Maybe education, maybe healthcare, maybe fight poverty, create employment, uh, and, and many other things. The second one is your venture, at least in the long run, needs to be financially sustainable. Many of my friends ask us, uh, can a charitable venture or a not-for-profit be converted into a social business? We say yes. Once you have raised funds, right, you need to make sure after a certain financial cycle, you are not asking for money to someone else. Your venture should make enough money uh, to help you sustain the business, at least in the long run. The first thing is we need to work on the mindset of the young people. So every human being can be a change maker and everyone can be an entrepreneur if they are given right kind of mentorship and access to resources. This is where this platform basically comes in. So now I'm sure uh, this bunch after this school will have a different view about Macedonia, about their society, their family, their personal life and the world. So the government and the private sector needs to enable them uh, with ideas, with, with mentorship, with ex access to resources like funding, maybe some crucial connections. Thus, they can actually convert their ideas into actions. Motivation to apply for this um, school was actually uh, to improve my informal education because I believe more in the informal than the formal education, especially nowadays. And to uh, share experience with the others uh, that are more or less my generation and to improve the cooperation as um, a generation and to close the generational gap between us. My motivation has always been the Republic of Macedonia. I have traveled all around the world and I believe that we need to make Macedonia better for us the Macedonians and for all the people that live in our country. So that has been my main motivation and coming to the School for Young Leaders I believe that we can always do and should do more for Macedonia. Choose most productive workforce in its industry and uh, the best interaction with this marketplace. As we said for the marketplace, now the things change with Facebook. Also, and with the leadership, the things has changed. It's not easy to be the leader or leadership. If you ask the, let's say, the leaders of the, let's say, of some businesses, all of those, the first thing that will say to you is change, changes. They do changes very often to be on top of the new, let's say, challenges.
I applied to attend this uh, school for leadership uh, to improve my skills, uh, to, uh, to upgrade my creativity, to improve my leadership skills, to learn uh, to get uh, uh, even uh, one small piece from uh, all these uh, professors that we have here we, who are coming from different uh, fields, uh, from different countries. So uh, I'm here to get uh, uh, everything I can get from them. Some uh, very important thing about the new leaders is lead through influence, not through the power of position. Those, let's say, times when the, the leader was a boss who was doing everything in the company have changed now. The organizations of the companies are not now uh, vertical, but everything tends to be more flat, more horizontal. And all of the employees do have, let's say, power and to have a uh, the opportunity to create something new. That's why when you want to change, you have to influence, to, to prove that new thing that you want and to prove the new the things that you want, new objectives that you want to achieve. Uh, for me, a leader is someone who puts the well-being of others before ourselves. Someone who has a passion, integrity, um, focus, someone who motivates and inspires others. I saw a lot of energy, a lot of potential. They are young people, they are familiar with the trends, let's say trends for the leadership, trends for, for the challenges to be, let's say, more, uh, more uh, efficient leader. That's why uh, the vision of the president I appreciate and it's good uh, because to be something, uh, in something to be uh, very strong, for example, to be better leadership, the, the important things are the first steps. Five o'clock in the morning, I got the same result as always. We're failing again. I throw the results on the table saying, that's it, I quit, I cannot do it anymore. And the paper rotated on the desk. I was lucky. I would say if you put a donkey working in a laboratory for 16 hours per year, it will find something, for sure. I was lucky, and I say it because women pretend to say, I am lucky when I succeed. Men will always say, of course, I'm a genius. I was very lucky. I waited for Heim without sleep. My mentor, the professor, the dean, came to the office. I sit down and I said, Heim, I have something to tell you. We have the result. But the reason you're a dean was wrong. 30 years ago, you invented capacitation. You found the parameters. You became famous by it. You were wrong. The result shows you were wrong. My stomach was shaking. My hands were shaking. I kn knew that he can explode and fire us all. He cannot be wrong. He's supposed to retire any day. And this was philosophy of his life. He looked at the result for five minutes. He stood up. He hugged me. And he said, you're my success after me. You're right, I'm wrong. We're dealing with pre-dogmatic truth. This is not absolute truth. And somebody will replace your truth with something. But at this point, you're my success after me. He called two more professors, Urinir and Professor Malek. They chose the weapon of choice, Atraktilozit. It's actually an army weapon, chemical weapon, that will kill anything. They killed the cells. We put them on a back big screen, I applied my method, and they were back alive. We had a success rate of 96% failures in reproduction. 96% of the times we had a normal human baby coming out of these zombie cells that are dying. We succeeded to help many couples. We have a lot of talented people and a lot of young people with a lot of potential. Um, maybe this school will help uh, to first of all define your target, to see yourself, because it's very hard to find exactly what you want to become and exactly what you want to do. So defining the targets can be taken from school, um, from the school. A second part is finding uh, other people like yourself and creating teams that will be functional and bright and asking the right question and pulling the country into the right direction. No, 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 these are fears that go in the back of your mind and your brain reacts like it. There is no fear. So make a mistake, fail, and step up and continue. I think a leader should have a clear vision and a clear aim for what they want to achieve. Uh, they need to inspire others to come along with them on that journey and 
to act with integrity. Uh, at first, I know that uh, this summer school have um, uh, perfect uh, lectures, professors and leaders, from who can I learn um, uh, many skills, and that will be a big experience for me. About 90% of the startups die in the first year, correct? Plus, minus, whatever percent. You know what is the most shocking? Out of this less than 10%, those who will succeed, not only after first year, 94% of them are not the original idea. You get it? When you multiply this thing, probability close to zero. So why you are constrained by the very nonsense that your first idea will be successful? It's not about the first idea. It's about starting the process, and you enjoy the process that was start at the beginning. But if you don't start, no beginning, nothing, okay? Yeah, so uh, I have to say that we've had a really impactful panel of experts, each of which has reached the zenith in their professional career. But if I have to pinpoint two of them, I'd say, um, I would say that I'd go for Professor Stefanovic and for Professor Petkovsky. I really look up to them and um, it was really illuminating what they had to say during the lectures, especially the concept of ideas for action, something that's been foreign to me uh, up until now and something that really stirred my inquisitive mind. This summer school uh, is a very important uh, event and I'm very glad to be here today. Uh, I expect to uh, learn and improve my leadership uh, skills and also communication skills. And also I expect to uh, meet uh, a new friends here. Response to opportunities and threats. This is the key thing. You will miss in your life so many opportunities. When you look at back, you will be scared and you will ask yourself many times, what an idiot. This is what I went through massively of not seeing that. And you don't see that because you don't focus enough on that. And you don't have a mindset to process that opportunity, this information. When people go through dialogue, something happens with them. And I pointed to that. So dialogue is more than words. You somehow connect, and then you start to change structures. So we've had nonsense dialogue centers in Sarajevo, Mostar, in Predor, in Bjarnevastrševo. We have now one in Skopje that you can go and visit uh, next week. And the one in Skopje is concretely working to change the educational system in Macedonia in such a way that children that go to school learn more about each other. So that's a very, very concrete change. Uh, we heard different definitions from different professors about that what a good leader should possess. Acu uh, according to me, a good leader should have a relevant experience. He should uh, think strategic. Uh, should be a good co communicator, he should motivate the members of the team and making the values to be visible and transparent for all of them. I got a lot of knowledge uh, from this school, and especially it was uh, Dr. Steiner uh, from Norway and uh, it was a really interesting lecture about the dialogue. There is no problem-solving element in dialogue. If you want to solve a problem, you need mediation, you need negotiation, you need arbitration, you need uh, mathematics, you need creativity. Dialogue is a tool for increasing our understanding of each other and why these conflicts are so powerful, emotional and difficult. When we talk about social entrepreneurship, we talk actually about three uh, major components. We're talking about leadership, and you can uh, uh, actually uh, press enter, please, which is, well, probably will be your role in most of the times 
where you set the direction, you build an inspiring vision, you create something new, and you know, leadership is also need, needs courage. A lot of the times, um, leaders are not so much in a consensus. People don't always love, like them or their ideas. So leadership is about creating something new that is not always in the consensus and it's not always easy. We, as young leaders, managed to transform, to transform it into a successful story by forming our alumni association and by creating an influential leadership entity in all spheres of action. ISLA is a non-governmental organization based in Skopje with about 280 young leaders from different academic and professional profiles. The goal of our organization is uh, to build a tightly network alumni association by creating an influential leadership entity. How that your problem fit in the broader picture and how that broader picture impact on your problem and the way how you are going to see context. And that's mostly, uh, not mostly, uh, equally important with the presentation you are receiving here and anywhere else. When people talk to you, give you something, try to understand the context. Uh, from my perspective, I think that the leader is a person who, who needs to inspire other persons to motivate and create a vision in the future which people will involved in this uh, vision to follow him and also um, to, to think not only inside of the box as well outside of the box. The great motivation is uh, the leaders that are coming here that uh, are providing their knowledge and their experience with us uh, that uh, will have great impact on uh, myself and on other leaders that will make us better persons and uh, persons who can contribute to the society on a greater cause um, in, in the years that will come and this is a great opportunity and I think that the knowledge and uh, the excitement of everything is the main part for me. Even if you are looking for purely technical solution, that technical solution might still have some limitations or even become better in circumstances as they are in your country. So that thing on uh, context is extremely, extremely important and very difficult to handle. The participants in team identifying issues ranging from health, education, climate change, basically everything captured by the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, looking for solutions which can, in a substantive way, change the situation. I think also the very unique feature of uh, this program was the fact that the president uh, came uh, and uh, participated in the program in a way that these young people shared with him their ideas and what better way to really impact what's going on around if uh, you have an opportunity to share the ideas with the key decision makers in a particular country. Uh, so that, in fact, is a, one of the feature of the ideas for action where we would like to motivate young people to come with ideas which go beyond simple business. A leader is somewhat born and afterwards just made. Uh, this is a school where uh, we polish our insecurities and we improve ourselves and uh, we're picked uh, specifically of our leading skills but also um, a lot of uh, the professors see our um, flaws or something that we have to improve on and it's, it's giving you a benefit of uh, self-reflecting and also self-acceptance of what you are, what are your flaws and what are your uh, positive sides and where you can improve yourself and how to manage it. Uh, we had some projects related with the changing the world, especially the water project 
and uh, we got the uh, special things we cannot uh, forget the, during our lives. For me personally, the social entrepreneurship is about definitely changing the world and shifting the paradigms in we are living now at the moment. For instance, I'm a business student, so my MBA are in business, but still all my life I've been doing social things, you know, like I've been part of so many NGOs, I even have my Down syndrome brother, meaning that I'm kind of connected with people with disability. So basically, these models of social entrepreneurship, I'm fighting them as a way of solving youth unemployment at the moment in Macedonia. But in order to do that, we need the proper ecosystem. Now we are trying to establish new ecosystem when it comes to social entrepreneurship because that's the thing that I'm most passionate about and that's the thing actually what Social Impact Award is about. And I really do hope that this type of collaboration will continue in the future, meaning that at the moment we are so at the beginning, so fragile, that we need all these types of educational sessions and training such as this school because part of the lectures were dedicated to social entrepreneurial thinking and models in order to, to create the future of our youth generations and in order to create job opportunities for them and to, to motivate them to stay in the country and open their social ventures. And I'm really, really happy because I can see that there are already some ideas within the group that can be further developed and implemented as really one of the few social ventures in Macedonia. So basically this, this is what the program is about. As you can hear in the video, it's about awards, it's about prizes, but actually it's an educational program that lasts for a year. It was established in 2009 in Austria by the Impact Hub Vienna, Erste Foundation and the University of Business and Economics, which actually created the curricula. And now we had a situation where we have social impact awards in this many countries. So basically the red ones are the countries that were part of social impact award 2016. The blues are the ones that were like the new countries from 2017. And now in 2018, we were even scale up the, the program more. So meaning that starting from just one country as Austria, which has really good social entrepreneurial system, is spreading the, this program is spreading around the world, including Tunisia, including countries such as, you know, bordering in Europe, like, uh, like Russia and, and Georgia. Well, I think that uh, we should not be afraid to dream that we should really follow our ideas, how matter crazy they might sound at a certain point, and that we should find collaborators and supporters that will help to this idea to, to become uh, lively ideas and to really take them into action and to implement them at a certain point. And of course, I really do hope that many of the young people, generally speaking, not only participants of this school, will be interested in developing their own social models for, for solving some challenges that are around them and really doing that in in one sustainable way that will provide kind of a better future for us all. This uh, so-called social being model, module is something which is incorporated with all modules and it has to do with social responsibility. So we are challenging them not only to solve problems using technical, technical application and tools, but to solve important issues. And for example, when they are creating website, they are considering creating website for children village, for example, that's Cosello uh, project. So they're thinking both like finding creative technical solution, but solving some important um, social problem or social, social phenomenon. And that's why we think that I think is a pretty much unique. And the proof is that there are many organizations, not only and um, companies and schools, not only from the country, but as well from abroad, who are approaching us and would like to, would like to replicate the model. So this is our classroom, these are our students. Uh, the name is very symbolic, I think. IT is the acronym for IT, but I think means that I'm not only playing games on my video or my tablet, 
I am solving the world problems. And that's why our motto basically is to build a better world with everything we are creating with, with our technology. We are very proud of this first generation. So these are the kids at during international competition in coding, CodeFest. It happened right here in Inex Gorica. And they were really attraction back then because they were competing in so-called juniors competition. And then they won two awards, second place for education video game for children, and third place for multiplayer video, video game. Uh, it was, yes, this year. And uh, uh, basically, the competition was up to 16 years. And they have 10 years. So, uh, so it, was really, it was really amazing to see this. And it was real encouragement for all of us to, to continue uh, working on this very, very unique project. As I already said, I believe will change forever the, the mentality of how we see technology and how we usually misuse technology, especially kids, because they adore technology, but they are only using, they are only playing. They do not think as creators of the technology. Well, according to my personal opinion, leadership is an attitude, and encouraging leadership means that you are taking opportunity to challenge the status quo, which means that you are ready to be criticized in all sphere of the society, starting from education, public governance, industry, business, and every single aspect of modern living, I would say. Therefore, I really, really think that this is a great initiative since we need leadership more than ever. And uh, I believe that uh, being here and sharing our vision and our experience from the companies we are representing, we actually contribute towards this idea and this vision. Is business as much as in politics and life in general, it is very important to keep promises because trust is something that we that is most important, at least in business. And therefore, we should be all aware of taking this personal and um, collective responsibility. That's why keeping promises was my like wrap-up point from this presentation and something we should we should really really fight for the integration of the society is really important and in my own way how i found it is first of all i definitely read about the destination that i'm going uh, i also like the local staff who are working here what kind of schools they went, what kind of studies they had, what kind of cultural aspects they concentrate on, what is important to them, what we should avoid. It's talking about it in details is really important. And also reading about that country's literature, visiting the museums, and also which is really important for me is using the public transport. Because in public transport, you see daily people's life, how they behave in their daily life, and then you make the adjustments for your product accordingly. And also, uh, to be a part of the team is really important that you need to be like one of them. You need to do something together. For example, this year we had an agency event uh, actually, we have prepared all the food and everything by ourselves. It's not, I'm the general manager, prepare everything and I will look into it. It's just be one of them, do it like them, and do it with them. It's really important. I also, being creative is not a word about art always. It's also for the management skills, in my opinion. Because if you share your past experience, uh, with the new culture, you really can be creative and making really something different which creates the difference and you are in the lead with your competitors. I think those leaders will be living in different countries, uh, working in different countries in the future, but also in my presentation I have advised them to come back to their own country and show their know-hows and show their skills, share them with the people here in Macedonia 
to just improve their country because there is a huge potential here in this country. Uh, I think it will be very good for them to share this knowledge. What we will do today is actually what I am doing 22 years in Macedonia. Uh, Motiva is working with all companies, not only with Skopje Brewery. Like uh, a trainer, I am also working with Key Safety System. Probably some of you have heard in Kicheo. Uh, Johnson Control, Strumica, 300 people were trained there almost three years. You are age, even younger than you. They lead uh, their teams. It's a company with 2,000, 3,000 or Drexler Meyer Kavadarci. It's also a green investment. About 4,000 people employees, 350 uh, youngsters like you mainly are leading the teams from 60, 70 people there. Uh, and we are training in much more deep. Uh, we don't have time now today, but I will uh, make presentation, what are the, the main skills which you, you will need to sharp in the next uh, few years? Well, first of all, I believe that all people should invest in themselves. All the changes in this world come from ourselves at first. Uh, that's how I train myself to think every day. Uh, so I think that this school will help me to invest in myself and get things better in everyday life. It's on the field of... Uh... Uh, preparation. If you know the audience, if you know that there will be a few doctors or a uh, few experts, maybe you can go through the, their resume to see what are their experience and to read about their uh, books or uh, what they have achieved. And before they uh, ask something, you say, oh, Mr. John, I read your uh, expertise in that, in that field. Uh, I confirm that uh, it is okay or whatever. So redirect <laughs> or, or something like that there. So uh, it means that uh, uh, the most of the important thing in, pre in, in presentation is preparation. So before you start the presentation, uh, you 90% of the job you have to, have to do. Yeah. The more of the, the job is before you start the, the, the presentation. And the, the, the rest 5% is to deliver because you, you have already uh, go through your presentation. Uh, my motivation to uh, come here was to um, connect with the people who will be on this program. I personally uh, wanted to meet uh, another young people who have visions, who have stories behind them, who wants to, to do better things in the future, who wants to improve themselves, and thereby to motivate myself to be better. The construction of our, uh, our definition about leadership, and uh, that the construction is happening now, and we are learning a lot of things. We are enriching our knowledge about, about what, is, what is a leader and what is a leadership. So the, the change in everything we thought was leadership, and how we learn something new every day, every second, every minute is wonderful to me. I define a leader as a person who, who has the capacity to translate a vision into future, into reality, uh, who empowers people and who gives others the tools to, to succeed in the future. I hope uh, that after this uh, school of young leaders, I will be able to apply my leadership skills into my profession to present the art to the people to find a way how to 
the culture and arts and music to be more present in everyday life and to help the young artists in general artists uh, how to be more affirmative uh, to have a bigger affirmation abroad and at home so to bring the culture and a different level the leader is someone who is about to face the problems so i think in the world of a very very problematic world in the, uh, that currently we have it is uh, very important that there is uh, people who really know how to lead and uh, because uh, most of the people will, will only talk about the problems but there is not many that will like to face challenge and solve them so that is the cause i actually apply because i'm trying to make the this world a, a bit a bit different place in a positive way generally the mix the best managers have kind of a mix between need for power and need for achievement those two usually are very important good power <laughs> not that uh, good power in bad yeah in best cases yeah no good power now the need for affiliation what does that mean wanting to belong wanting to do those kind of things okay those people are very good for example to help people to work in public relations right <coughs> to work in medical things to help people right okay so you you have that need to to help okay so you have to think about it. that kind of an individual is not very good to try to push people because they want to be friends they want to do those kind of things but they are excellent in public relations okay so think about that very important a leader is a person uh, who creates an inspiring vision of the future motivates and inspires people uh, to engage with that vision, manages the liver of the vision, uh, coaches and builds a team so that it is more effective at achieving the vision. Um, what is behind that is a distributed database that creates trust and many people just confirm by voting that, okay, that Bitcoin belongs to you and you and you. And blockchain, is a framework similar, but it can be used not only for currency, it can be used for many things. Most notably for those who are lawyers, I work now in some projects, collaboration with lawyers. They talk about smart contracts. What are smart contracts? So contracts that are computer programs that execute themselves, including the payment is, is automatic. Payment might be in real currency or in virtual currency. And then there's plenty of plenty of challenges there. What's going on if something goes wrong? <coughs> and the so-called paradigm industry 4.0, which, which is a terminology created in Germany, is the fourth industrial revolution. We talk about autonomous machines, autonomous vehicles. And machines will be autonomous to that extent that they can order their repairment from another machine. And that machine will do the repair, and then the first machine will pay for the other machine. So it's, everything has to be done by program. And there are plenty of aspects. In engineering, we can do the program to be executed. But then plenty of open issues from the point of view of those. economics and most notably law. What's going on if something, something is wrong? Who is responsible? And these are, these are the current things that may create a lot of synergy between different uh, areas. I think it's um, it's a very positive initiative, and it uh, creates a lot of good energy and uh, hopefully motivation and enthusiasm with uh, the participants, uh, because uh, not only me, but there are very high-profile uh, lecturers and teachers, uh, some former heads of, head of states, and uh, we know that in the past we had. Uh, United Nations uh, uh, General Sec uh, Secretary General uh, uh, Ban Ki Moon, so uh, it's a unique opportunity uh, not only to see what these people present, but also personally to interact with them, 
and uh, it can be uh, motivating and inspiring for the students and the future leaders. Uh, this is the best experience that I ever had, the international experience, to have the chance to be between uh, all these young uh, new leaders, uh, to have the chance to meet the president, of course, um, and uh, the great professors. Uh, my favorite professor here uh, is uh, uh, Mr. Pet uh, Petkovsky. Uh, he inspired me. He make me to change my mindset, to achieve goals, to create new goals, and uh, he, he he can give you supplies uh, for the future and um, to prepare you for this. And uh, well, we have to push to this positive direction, this mentality, and for that, I, I believe the young people they can give the right contribution to avoid anything which is coming from the past. And in this sense, I feel quite optimistic the future of Balkan. Coming from uh, the university, I appreciate uh, quite well this initiative of President Ivan. This uh, initiative of eight years. And uh, during these eight years, uh, well, uh, more than 300 people have been uh, educated in the school and also prepared in the school. As I see, the program of the school was quite a good one and it's a good model to be spread also in other countries of the region. So it's one of the initiatives that we have only to support but also to spread it. For that I appreciate uh, the work done by President Ivanov and uh, for me it was to give a kind of contribution to this initiative. It's a small contribution, a modest one, but uh, on the other side, uh, well, uh, it's uh, what we need today. Because uh, it's, only, it's not only the, what we are transmitting to these young people, but also the the creation of these conditions for these people to be together, these young people to be together, debating, discussing, staying, living to, together, they can create uh, another region, another world, it's, it's more cooperative, more peaceful, more human. Pa evo, dojdop me do, da okažem, ova vaše patuvanje koje go narekop me škola za mladi literi, dojde do, ne do krajot, do prvata stanica. Ova prva stanica, ki ji dobijete setrifikatite, za da prodolžite od utre vo novata škola, škola koja se narekuva život. Život vo 21. vek. Kako što ih kažap na otvaranjeto na školata, Сите наши учесници ви овозможија, ви помогна да видите во како свет ке живеет, како ке биде светот на милениумците, како што ве нарекуваат вас или Ипсилон генерацијата. Посакувам се тоа на знаење и умење што го стекнавте да го споделувате, да не го чувате за себе. Сакајте го она што го имате. Најголемата тајна на обстојување на на секоја нова генерација е да го сака, да го почитува и да го чува тоа што го има. Затоа што ако го сака тоа што го нема, ќе го изгуби и тоа што го има. Но тој што го сака она што го има, еден ден ќе го има и тоа што го нема. Затоа сакајте ги вашите ближни, вашите родители, воженетите, мажените, своите деца, сакајте си ги пријателите, сакајте си го вашиот комшилок, вашата улица, сакајте си го вашиот град, сакајте си ја вашата држава, сакајте си ја вашата планета, бидејќи е една и единствена. Чувајте ги овие пријателства и контакти што ги стекнавте, развивајте ги, споделувајте ги и храбро погледнете на светот околу вас, бидејќи не сме свести колку светот се измени. Како живееме во многу променет свет, 
но кој бара да го осознаеме, да го сватиме и да се вклучиме. И ви посакувам на вистина да го користите се во ова што го стекнавте, да го споделувате, да го применувате и вашиот живот да биде исполнет со радост, со стрекја и со успеси. Бидете успешни затоа што тогаш ќе предводите. А успехот секој пат оди со храбрите. Бидете храбри за да бидете срекни, а срекни се успешните. Ви посакувам од утре сите да ве видам насмеани, да ве видам исполнети со надеж за вашиот живот кој стои пред вас и да видете позитивен пример за другите. Мислам дека ви е доволно до сега. Знам дека понатаму сите стекнати знаења, вештини и искуства не себишно ќе ги споделувам со луѓето во мојот живот. Сметам и верувам дека после оваа школа никој од нас повеќе не е ист. Верувам и дека најдоброто до прва ќе дојде. Нека ние со среќе на сите. Ке видам кратка и ке споделам една мисла од Аристотел. Образованието на умот без образование на срцева не е никакво образование. Многу фала to you guys for your hospitality and special thanks to you for your support to young generation. Thanks. Среќата и успехот ги прати храбрите, затоа храбро чекорете во животот. Благодарам. А а Чок те шекре дали? I'm sure that you know what I feel right now. You're gonna face a lot of challenges in your life because every and each of you is a leader. But you have to know one thing. Gandhi once said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Thank you for all. Thank you to have a chance to be here and to learn many things from all those great professors. I'm so happy and grateful. A big thanks to Mr. President and you young leaders, Fala. Uh, this course has taught me that we as young people are actually starting to take the reins and we are now the drivers of a change in the world to something a bit more positive. And that has instilled me with a lot more confidence as a generation. Now uh, Chief Makedonski, so blagodoram. <laughs> Your Excellency, I remember you saying what is important most, education, education and education. So I thank you for this opportunity for this school where we studied a lot, where we learned some new things. Thank you. Почитувам председателите, ви благодариме што ни возможивте да бидеме дел од една ваква обука и уште голема поголема благодарност за тоа што оваа обука се одржува во најбавиот хотел на Охридското крајбрежје. А вие не заборавајте ги четирите златни правила. Ја само ке кажам една работа. Овој белег шој тука доле, нека биде белегот на патот кон успехот, кон таа челична врата на успехот. Овој сертификат го носам во Србија со уште поголема обврска, мотив и ветување дека ќе бидам поголем и подобар промотор на нашата Македонија, македонската култура, традиција, обичај и секако македонскиот јазик. После ова искуство ќе ми се отворат нови можности и ќе ми се случи промена во живота. Се надевам дека ако секој од нас утре научи да го гледа светот со очите на другиот, сите ние ќе живееме во еден подобар и помирен свет. Научив дека најопорните ќе го променат светот, а запознав 40, односно без знаене, 39, упорни срца. Направете се што можете. Секако можам да кажам дека после овие 10 поминати дена, значи со вака успешни и талентирани млади лидери, Македонија ќе има светла имена. Ако има едно нешто кое би го понел со себе од оваа школа, е фактот дека знаењето заедно со љубовта е едно од ретките нешта кое можеме да го споделиме со сите околу нас 
и пак да го имаме в ООН, ако личина, в която сме го имали пред да го споделиме. Тук се каля нашите способности и учевме не само за нашите лидерски способности, тук учевме и за животот. И сите, и ако от различни држави бевме еднакви. Та, сметам дека светот со вакви лидери до прва ќе ја живе својата светла страна. Гајс, it already started. Grab it all. Секој од нас е различен, меѓутоа верувам дека заедно сплотени, пријателски, можеме да го освоиме и да го промениме светот. Сето дека има вакви умови, нема страв за едината на Македонија. Сите ние имаме различни идеи, желби и посакувања, но сепак, оние пеперотки кои што ги имаме во стомака, треба да ги пуштеме и да изкочат и заедно сплотени да помогнеме на секој од нас. Во оваа школа научивме многу за лидерството, но и тоа дека освен визија и цели, ние треба да имаме да делуваме, да има акција. From what I've concluded is that a man, if you want to go fast, should go alone. But, but if man wants to go further, it has it, it, he has to go uh, together. Драги колеги, би ви порачала енергијата која собравте тука, не се вишто да ја споделувате каде да, каде да одите. Со насмевка, приватете го секој нов предизик. Искрено се надевам дека по ова десетневно патување и сето стекнато до сегашно искуство и вештини, дека сето ова ќе оди во насока на еден катализатор кој што ќе може да се избори со сите обществени аномалии кои што се проявуваат во дело кругот на нашето потесно делување. Јас само би рекла дека сум на вистина срекна што имав можност да бидам дел од оваа школа, а она што ќе ми остане како мото после овие 10 дена е дека богатството лежи во познанствата. Срекна сум за сите тука што ве запозна. Ви благодарам. Верувам дека еден ден ќе видете горди со нас, со нашиот успе, дека сме биле дел од ова школа и знаењето што сме го стекнале во ова школа, ќе придонесеме за да го е, смениме, да направиме, е, да го смениме светот во позитивен е, аспект. А, можам само да кажам дека од денеска панатака со храброст ќе чекарам ни животот и своето знаење снекнато тука, ќе го споделувам со сите. Иако животот е понекогаш тежок, никогаш да не се откажувам и секогаш да приземам и да, да не се откажувам да секогаш да имам да ги приземам овој можност. Хвала. Овде научивме дека околу нас е еден свет кој треба да го освојуваме. Но нас во нас има многу повеќе светови. За да почнете да го освојувате светот околу вас, најпрво ќе треба да почнете да ги освојувате световите во вас. Не заборавете да погледнете во вас а потоа со таа љубов да го прегрнете светот. Се надевам дека сите вештини што ги научивме тука ќе знаеме и ќе умееме да ги спроведеме на дело, дека ќе направиме многу добрина и добрините ќе имаат влијание до крајот на овој милениум за да го потврдиме на што име милениумски. Дека само со вакви школи може да се дојде успех. Знањата и вештините може би еден ден ќе изгледат. Научивме на вистина прекрасни работи, но пријателствата мислам дека за секогаш ќе траат. Дека сите до тука ќе коревме сами, но сега понатака ќе ќе кориме заедно. После секое паѓање има станување. Меѓутоа тука и науката да не паднеме на истата препрека. Нова школа учевме што значи да се биде лидер, а лидерите ја креираат својата среќа и ја зграбчуваат. Научивме многу, стекнавме големи пријателства кои што сум сигурна дека ќе траат од сега понатаму. Се надавам дека искуствата кои што ги собравме во овие 10 дена ќе бидат само еден добар темел на она што ќе продолжиме да го градиме во еднина.